A local mafia boss is beating up police officers in a Shanghai police station for arresting his beautiful wife, while no one dares to retaliate. He storms out of the building, yelling at the officers, and walks down the street, only to discover that all of their cars are gone. An army of Axe gang rivals appears in front of the group, encircling the men and leaving them with nowhere to flee. The gangsters start shooting their opponents, while the mafia boss tries to flee, but one of the generals throws an axe at him and cuts off one of his legs, causing him to fall to the ground. Brother Sum, the Axe Gang leader, draws a weapon and begins dancing horrifyingly towards the Mafia boss, ignoring the man's cries for mercy while striking him repeatedly. The gangsters paid the officers a lot of money not to interfere, and they continue to terrorize the town with their horrifying dances, killing anyone who got in their way. Only a poor town like Pigsty Valley can live peacefully in these chaotic times where gangsters rule over the people, as the gangs have no interest in their poverty. The entire establishment is owned by a landlord who appears to be drunk all of the time and terrorizes the patrons by flirting with them, whether the person is a middle-aged man or this unusual-looking woman with extraordinary teeth. Except for his wife, the landlady, who appears to be angry all the time, no one can escape his masculine charm. Her hobbies include yelling at the tenants for late payments and knocking out the village's most attractive man. Two mysterious men, somewhere on the outskirts of the village, gaze upon the people and plan to unleash their evil schemes. They enter town and begin blackmailing the handsome man for money, claiming to be members of the Axe Gang. Their threats, however, are not met with fear, as the villagers begin to surround the location in hostility. Singh, the skinny man, tries to flee after realizing he has probably chosen the wrong town to terrorize, but is stopped immediately by the landlady. The woman then hits him furiously with a slipper, causing the man to flee in terror. Singh threatens to call for reinforcements and throws a firecracker behind the walls, striking someone. Surprisingly, by blowing up the man's hat, he actually alerted the general from the Axe Gang, and the gangsters stormed into town, demanding to know who was throwing the bombs. Singh informs the man that it was one of the people inside, and the general walks over to the landlady. The woman detects trouble and flees at breakneck speed, leaving her tenants to fend for themselves. The situation is exacerbated when the handsome man tells the gang leader that he isn't afraid of their threats, prompting the general to advance, intending to strike him with the axe. The man, however, is attacked by an unknown force and knocked inside a barrel, breaking his spine and forcing the gang to call for help. Soon after, an army of gangsters arrives in Pigsty Valley and begins terrorizing anyone who gets in their way. They take a young girl hostage and pour gasoline over her body, demanding to know who killed the captain. After not receiving a response, the gang leader attempts to strike the girl with a lighter, but the attempt is foiled by a young man who claims to be the perpetrator. The gangsters charge at him in rage, but he responds with a barrage of kicks, knocking the criminals to the ground. Suddenly, a powerful punch knocks several men away, and the tailor emerges from the crowd, fighting the enemies in order to help the young man. The gang tries to fight back by grabbing their guns, but the weapons are destroyed as they are thrown against the walls. Donut, the restaurant owner, charges out and attacks the gangsters with a stick, breaking their weapons and sending them flying backwards. The man's ferocious attacks create a sandstorm in which only the criminal's agonizing screams can be heard. When the dust settles, the gangsters are all defeated on the ground as they desperately try to flee the town. The gang leader is enraged by what happened and blames Singh and his brother for causing them great embarrassment, despite the fact that the two are not even members of the gang. Some orders his men to murder them, but when the gangster throws the axe at the main character, he manages to flee just as the weapon strikes. The gang leader is impressed with the man's abilities and instructs him to go kill one of the Pigsty Valley residents if he ever wants to join the axe gang. Singh lectures his brother, Bone, about being ambitious after leaving the Mafia's hideout, telling him that they'll have everything if they can join the gangsters. Bone wonders how they can kill anyone from the Pigsty Valley, as they all appear to be extremely powerful, but Singh reveals that he has known Kung Fu since he was a child. He appears to have spent all of his savings on a book from a beggar that claims to give him great powers. Instead of attending college and becoming a doctor, Singh chose to practice Kung Fu in order to protect the world from evil. When he notices a mute girl being bullied by a group of young boys, he orders them to stop. Singh decides to assist her by using his Kung Fu, but is quickly beaten and knocked to the ground. The boys humiliate him, laugh at his efforts, and abandon the two defeated on the ground. Singh has decided that good people will never win in this world and vows to be a bad person in order to succeed. 
He sees an ice cream cart and runs towards it, pretending to be a customer, but quickly flees after grabbing the cones, leaving the girl to chase them in vain while Sing laughs at her efforts. Meanwhile, Brother Sum has decided to hire professional killers to exact vengeance on the Pigsty Valley residents. The two men appear to be blind, but their names are well known in the criminal world for using music to kill their enemies. When the advisor flatters them by referring to the assassins as the most powerful killers, they decline with humility, claiming that another man known as the Beast is far more powerful but is currently imprisoned in the asylum. One of the fighters decides to leave the village at night to avoid further trouble, but he comes across a musician playing his instrument. As objects behind him are shattered by the sound waves, the man begins to walk away from the music. He quickly realizes something is wrong, but fails to react in time and is decapitated by the assassin. Simultaneously, the tailor is ambushed by the second musician and forced to fight back while exchanging blows. In close combat, the two are evenly matched, and their struggle eventually causes them to crash out of the buildings, where the first musician awaits them. The blind man begins to attack the tailor with sound waves, sending him flying across the field. The restaurant owner arrives and saves the tailor before he is killed by the continuous attacks. The fighter can more effectively counter the enemy's attacks with the spear, and he throws all of his weapons at the assassins. Donut flies towards the incoming waves, deflecting attacks and getting closer to the opponents as the music gets louder. The man uses the last weapon to attack the musicians, but he is stopped by a force field and knocked away by the enemy's counter. The musicians retake their position and continue to fire mercilessly, while the tailor pushes Donut away from danger, injuring himself fatally in the process. The landlady's shouting disperses the waves before the two are killed by the onslaught. The assassins realize there is another powerful entity present and attempt to pursue the woman, but are quickly stopped by the landlord who descends from the sky. The assassins attempt to punch the man, but their blows are deflected by the landlord's body, causing them to collide. The landlord grabs the two men and starts throwing them around in a circle, eventually throwing them away like ragdolls. The assassins regain control and attempt to use their most powerful attack, transforming the sound waves into skeleton warriors that fly towards the man. The landlady steps in and uses her shouting technique to scatter the demons and blast the musicians away. When the battle is over, the people of the town try to save the heroes, but two of them have already died, and Donut succumbs to his wounds. The next day, Singh tries to bully a train passenger but is repeatedly beaten and thrown off the vehicle like a common beggar. He accuses his brother of not being evil enough and complains that they haven't killed anyone after so many days, wondering how they can join the gangsters in such a way. He sees the ice cream girl again and rushes up to her, demanding all of her money and throwing her to the ground. Singh grabs the girl again and threatens her with a knife, but all he sees is tears fall from her eyes. Bone finds the money inside the cart, and they grab the coins and prepare to flee, but Singh notices the girl communicating with him in sign language and realizes who she is. The girl shows Singh the lollipop from years ago, revealing that she was the mute girl whom the main character attempted to save when they were children. When the man realizes the truth, he feels terrible and smashes the lollipop on the floor before fleeing. Before Singh can reflect on his mistakes, he is kidnapped by the gangsters and led to Brother Sum, who informs him that he is now a member of the gang and assigns him a new mission. The man is taken to a psychiatric hospital, where the advisors instruct him to free a serial killer who is being held in the deepest part of the building. Singh rushes towards the hospital and enters, eventually arriving underground in a frog-infested corridor. He picks the lock and opens the metal door to find an elderly gentleman sitting on the toilet. They bring back the person, and the gangsters are skeptical that this is the legendary killer known as the Beast. The advisor explains that their leader wants the man to murder two people and is willing to pay anything, but he is skeptical that the old man is the right person. The gangster pulls out a gun and points it at the man, but he quickly withdraws it and points it at his own head. The man pulls the trigger and fires, but miraculously, he catches the bullet with only two fingers, as everyone watches in awe. As everyone in the casino flees for their lives, the beast turns towards the walls and stomps on the floor with incredible force, blasting a massive hole through the room. The killer charges forward and sees the opponents waiting for him beside the table, who turn out to be the landlady and the landlord, who have come here to permanently destroy the Axe Gang. The couple shows the gangsters the funeral bell they brought as a gift, prompting Brother Sum to scream angrily at them. The woman kicks the killer from below, splitting the table in half, while her husband kicks the man in the face, but neither moves the beast. The two regroup and charge at the enemy, attacking with their combined efforts, but are quickly knocked back and thrown into the air. The killer starts punching the husband with incredible speed, while the man desperately tries to avoid the punches, but fails at the last moment and is knocked against the walls. 
The woman flies in and starts shouting, sending a shockwave that knocks everything away but only manages to push the enemy backward slightly. The killer mocks her efforts and proceeds to attack the woman mercilessly, throwing her across the room. Seeing that the opponent is far more powerful, the landlady goes to the giant bell they brought and smashes it on the top with incredible force, shattering the giant metal. The woman transforms the bell into a massive amplifier and unleashes her lion's roar, unleashing a massive shockwave that destroys everything in sight. The attack was so powerful that it sent the beast flying backwards alongside everything else, causing a tornado to rip apart the entire room inside the building. Surprisingly, the killer survives as he crawls on the ground, but the couple jumps in and prepares to fire another round. The enemy, on the other hand, quickly admits defeat and begs for mercy, but when the couple relaxes their guard, the man attacks them with the flower daggers and stabs them in the stomach. As they struggle to attack the opponent's weak points, the three quickly become entangled in a stalemate. When the gang leader notices this, he orders Singh to hit the couple over the head with a wooden bat. The main character hesitates before attacking, but eventually decides to hit the killer on the head, causing the man to break free in a rage that throws the couple away. The killer hurls the main character to the ground and punches him in the face, knocking his head into the ground. However, the beast quickly notices something is wrong and notices that the couple has vanished, and realizes that they have taken Sing with them. The couple transports the man back to Pigsty Valley and attempts to help him with medical herbs and bandages, but are surprised to discover that Sing is still alive despite his injuries. They speculate that the only reason the main character isn't dead is that the damage actually awakened the man's hidden abilities. At the same time, the gangsters arrive in the Pigsty Valley, which has been completely abandoned by the residents, and the beast discovers the remains of bandages where a giant cocoon appears to have hatched. The gangsters emerge from the buildings, and the killer is surprised to see that Singh is still alive despite being nearly killed. The mob charges at the main character and attempts to kill him with their weapons, but their attacks are easily avoided as Singh knocks them flying with minimal effort. As the gangsters land on the lower platform, he kicks them across the field. The criminals attempt to surround and attack the fighter, but Singh demonstrates superhuman abilities and kicks the men through the buildings. The gangsters attempt to flee and run towards the beast, but they are defeated one by one, eventually leaving only Singh and the killer standing. The main character punches the opponent in the face and kicks him in the stomach, causing the opponent to fall to the floor, but is surprised to see that the man is barely injured despite the ferocious attacks. He then attempts to attack the opponent with a barrage of punches, but the strikes are quickly stopped by the opponent, who is able to catch the flying hands. Singh crushes the man's feet, causing him to scream in pain. He then delivers a devastating kick, knocking the man to the ground and punching him across the field. As he lies on the ground, the killer decides to change tactics and begins imitating a frog. The man charges towards Singh at breakneck speed, knocking him through the building and crashing into the walls. As he leaps across the floors, the hero tries to run towards higher ground, but the beast detects his movements and launches at him, sending him into the sky. Singh vanished into the atmospheres as a result of the powerful attack. The man continues to fly outwards, but eventually slows down as he regains control of his momentum and looks up at the sky, where the clouds have formed a giant Buddha. Singh clasps his hands together and begins flying downwards, gaining incredible speed as he charges towards the beast. The man's palms catch fire, and the flames quickly engulf the rest of his body. As he senses the immense pressure coming from the sky and sees what appears to be a meteorite falling towards him, the killer suspects something is wrong. Singh employs the Buddhist palm technique, which creates a massive crater beneath the opponent and crushes him with enormous gravity from above. Singh pulls back the attack while flying across the sky as the beast begs for mercy. The killer tries to ambush the main character with the same dagger as before, but Singh quickly counters and strikes right behind the man, shattering the entire building in the process. After witnessing the killer's incredible power disparity, the killer surrenders and kneels before Singh, finally admitting defeat like never before. Later, as the ice cream girl pushes her cart across the street, she notices a newly opened candy shop in town. She walks up to the front and notices that Bone is now working as the store's assistant. Singh immediately notices the girl and rushes towards her while smiling at his friend. As she notices that Singh has finally become his true self, the girl returns the warmth. They start remembering how they felt the first time they saw each other, and Singh happily welcomes the girl into the store. <laughs>